I've got three predictions for you. The sun will come out tomorrow. You can be sure of that. Moustaches are the next big thing. And the H6 is going to be Havel's first great Australian success story. I know, that's the biggest call of all. But I've been living with it for the last couple of days and I'm impressed. And after this video, I reckon you will be too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this review down into eight sections, starting with design. I can't overstate how ridiculously good looking it is. And then price and features. These seats become heated and ventilated. Practicality. I have hit my head on the target quite a few times. The engine specs. Oh, safety. Six, seven, eight, ownership. Right, so I've got this, all this stuff in it, but get rid of that. Driving. Really comfortable, it's really composed. And fuel use. Now, those are the time codes right there. You can flip through to whatever you want. And if you're watching on YouTube, those, those are the chapter markers down there. Rifle through it, rifle through it, it's like a sock drawer, or something like that. Now, if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au. Give us a like and subscribe. It's free. The new Havel H6 is ridiculously good looking. It's so darn attractive that if I was the boss of Mazda or Toyota, I'd be firing my chief designer straight away. Look at that grill, the tail lights, the insides. Seriously, there isn't an angle from which it doesn't look good. Apart from that one. And it's the same inside. Simple, stylish. Minimal, just two screens, hardly any buttons. The H6 looks enormous, but it's not really. End to end, it's 4,653 millimeters, which is 2.44 Richard Berries. That's about that much longer than a Toyota RAV4. Look, I, I can't overstate how ridiculously good looking it is. And see, I've noticed, I've noticed people looking at me when I'm driving. It's, it's not just a moustache, it's that's part of the moustache, but it's, it's mainly that. And I think that's the reason why it's gonna sell really well. The other reason is the price. There are three grades in the H6 range. It kicks off with the premium. I mean, where do you go from there? I'll tell you where, you go to the Lux. And above the Lux is the Ultra. And those are the prices just down there. Now this is the Australian launch of the H6. So those are drive away prices. Starts at $39.90 and heads all the way up to $38.990. Standard features. Do you want to have a look? I'll show you. Come on. Oh, yeah, come on in. Come on in. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, standard features. Now we are in the middle of the range Lux grade. But even on the entry-grade premium, you still get some pretty good stuff. You get these two 10.25-inch screens. You still get a six-speaker stereo system. You get a proximity key with push-button start. You get air conditioning as well, along with LED headlights and 18-inch alloy wheels. Now, stepping up to the Lux grade, this one here, you get power-adjustable driver's seat heated front seats, you get dual zone climate control and a 360 degree camera as well. Stepping up to the top of the range Ultra, swaps out that screen, that 10.25 inch screen for a 12.3 inch screen. These seats become heated and ventilated. You also get a head up display, you get a panoramic sunroof, you get a power tailgate and 19 inch alloy wheels. Very good. The H6 is spacious, with big wide seats up front and plenty of room in the back. That's me, sitting behind my driving position, which is excellent, considering I'm 191 centimetres tall, and about 150 centimetres of that is legs alone. Headroom is great too. There's also directional air vents back there, plus two USB ports, and another two up front, on each side of the floating centre console. The design of this console means that there's storage under there. Look, hello! And there's a big centre console bin there, cup holders there, and back there too, the door pockets, they could be bigger. Now, let me show you the boot. You don't get an automatic tailgate on the Lux Grade, which is what we've got here. 
but it does fit all of the car's guide luggage. This load lift is quite high and I have hit my head on the tailgate quite a few times. But apart from that, not bad. Not bad at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not. Oh, I have to start again now. I'm counting radars. Havel says there are 14 radars on board and five cameras. It's all part of the safety system. Yes, there's AEB, which detects pedestrians, cyclists, and other motor vehicles. There's lane keeping assistance, traffic sign recognition and blind spot warning. And if you step up to the Ultra, you get rear cross traffic alert with braking. Very impressive. Oh, uh, engine. Now, all H6s come with a two litre turbo petrol engine. The bottom two grades come with front wheel drive. The top grade, the Ultra, comes with all-wheel drive. Ooh, delicious. Havel says that after a combination of open and urban roads, the front-wheel drive cars should be using 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres. The all-wheel drive cars are using 8.3, they say. Well, we tested the front-wheel drive cars, and that's what we got. The good news is, it runs on 91 Ron, which is the cheap fuel. Had a good mate, called Ron. Very good mate. Do not park your vehicle near flammable materials, such as areas with plenty of grass, or hay, or scrap paper. Ah, hello. The H6 is covered by Havel's warranty. It's a seven year unlimited kilometre warranty, which is outstanding. There's also cap price servicing. Even better than all that, you get this, a leather satchel. Right, so I've got this, all this stuff in it, but you get rid of that. And look at this, very fashionable. Let's go for a drive. Now it's got a rotary dial shifter and actually the whole mechanism is, is really comfortable and, and really smooth it works so well visibility really really good now you do feel like you're in something pretty big it feels bigger than a RAV4 well it is bigger than a RAV4 it's about that much bigger than a RAV4 but it feels a lot bigger than that it feels like it feels like a truck um, and that's mainly because of this big broad flat bonnet but you can actually see where it ends so that's good for, for visibility as well that rear window is tiny uh, but I can see out of it pretty well and there's that 360 degree camera too. Now, okay, now the thing that you should know is that the steering wheel's a little bit weird. Now, when I say weird, it's, you know, it's just, it's fine. But it's got an edge on it which is just a bit sharp. It's just a bit firm, it could do with it a bit more padding. So, after spending a couple of days with it, I was at home and I was trying to work out why my hands hurt and it was because I've been driving for a couple of days. Don't worry, you'll, you'll get calluses and you, you're not gonna feel it anymore. No, you're not, you won't get calluses. You might get calluses. Okay, the engine, two litre turbo petrol engine. Look, it doesn't have loads and loads of power, but it's got enough. Uh, but it is responsive, it does feel quite peppy. And that seven speed dual clutch, I'm actually quite impressed by that. It's smooth. They can, be, they can be quite jerky in, in traffic, but, but not this one. This one's so far, for the last couple of days, has behaved itself quite well, and it's been pretty seamless in its gear shifts. Okay, now the steering. Now, i tell you what, um, when you are changing direction quickly, like you're doing a three-point turn and you're, you're going backwards and forwards, you do, I can feel the, the motor sort of fighting me a little bit, but for the most part, the steering is really, Good. It's really well weighted, um, it's accurate, it's light. Um, no, I'm, I'm impressed with the steering as well. But the part of the driving experience that I really, really like and I'm really impressed by is the ride. It's 
really comfortable, it's really composed, there's no lean and wobble in the corners, well there is, I mean it's a car so it, it does do that, but it's not overly wobbly or overly leany like a lot of really good SUVs can be. No, I'm actually really impressed by the body control of this car. Look, just coming around this roundabout here, I know what most cars are like on this and like we went around that hard enough for everything in the back to slide around but not us. That's um, yeah, no that's good. Okay, just a little bit of an explanation about what Havel is and, and how it fits into the GWN thing. Now you might have noticed on the back there's a badge which says GWM. Now that stands for Great Wall Motors which is like the parent company of, of Havel. Um, big Chinese company um, trying to make it big in Australia and as I said before this could be the car which does it. All right, it's time for scores. I'm gonna break them down, give a score for each section, and then maybe give an overall score for the entire H6 range. So, for design, what do you reckon? It's drop dead gorgeous. I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Price and features, ridiculously good value. Again, outstanding, eight out of 10. Practicality, huge inside, massive inside, floating center console, USB ports everywhere, cup holders, yes the door pockets could be bigger but it fits all of our Cars Guide luggage. 8 out of 10 for practicality too. For safety, I'm giving an 8 out of 10. Very impressive. AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keeping assistance, blind spot warning on all of them. Step up to the Ultra and you get rear cross traffic alert with braking. Very good. Ownership, 7 year unlimited kilometre warranty. Outstanding. Again, another 8. It's an 8 fest. No it's not. Fuel economy, I'm giving it a 7. Yes, that's right. Look, it's not too bad on fuel, but there could be a hybrid. And where's the EV? Come on, seven out of 10. Engine specs, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Yes, that two litre turbo petrol engine is a little bit noisy, but it's responsive and that seven speed dual clutch automatic is very smooth. Now, driving. Now, this is the one area I didn't expect the H6 to really impress me. Yes, it's really good looking and I knew that it would be really good value, but I was kind of expecting it to drive not so well. Truth is, it's excellent. That ride is so composed, that engine works really well with that dual clutch automatic. I was amazed actually, and so it's getting an eight out of 10 for that. Now, the overall score for the entire H6 range is 7.9 out of 10. Now, if you wanna read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and give us a like and subscribe.